Hello and welcome to another edition of the Hurry Up from the Sports Heads on Alt Sports. I'm your host Andre Dixon, still in the bunker, but we're getting closer to be able to getting out of here. I'm joined by my mate, pal, buddy, Sam Morgan. How are you? Very well. Cap down the days till we can get out of prison. I mean, house arrest. <laughs> ah, I'm sure your missus will, will like to hear you say that. <laughs> she probably wants me to go. Yeah, she probably. <laughs> She's probably counting down too. <laughs> <laughs> and, my, and I'm joined by again my bestie Hannah Wilkes. How are you? I'm all right. I'm I'm going a little stir crazy. I'm not going to lie. I uh, I need to get out of this house. I'm going to, I need some air. Like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like a bit of a, a, a funny week for everyone because obviously we had um, so-called Blue Monday, um, you know, obviously last month, last Monday, just gone. Uh, and then, uh, you know, everyone's, everyone's supposed to be looking out for each other, you know, just make sure everyone's happy. But I think everyone's at the same point now where we can't book a holiday. We can't plan anything at the moment. We don't know when our injections are coming, but they're coming. That's the main thing. But we had some good news yesterday. Um, with uh, President now Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, um, Kamala, you know, uh, Kamala. Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. Right. Well, I, I'm uh, oh, me and she makes us feel calm. Her name me is me and calm. the uh, all the Republicans are the people that get get that name wrong. You know, they do it on purpose, but it's different. But um, yeah, you guys excited about that? The USA feels like it's back. Do you know what? I wasn't. I was quite taken aback by just seeing Biden and Harris being sworn in, just how calm I suddenly felt. I was like, oh, okay, the grown ups are here. Um, don't even get me started on how great Kamala, Dr. Biden and Michelle Obama looked, because I could talk about that for 45 minutes. Oh while. my Lord. Um, but yeah, I feel calm. And do you know what as well, do you know what I did this morning? I re-followed the POTUS account on Twitter and it was a really nice moment of like, yes, I can follow this again and good things, good things in my Twitter feed. I, see, I, I think it was, it was a nice uh, breath of fresh air. I've got to say, I know you mentioned those names there. Uh, J-Lo still hasn't aged. Did they freeze her and then put her back until the next appearance? Because it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> She's incredible. She, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna like, lie. I was actually, I, I was surprised that she got called to perform because, you know, she's a great performer, but not a strongest singer. But um, so, but she knocked it out of the park. I was quite, I was quite impressed. And we can't not mention Lady Gaga. One, she looked phenomenal, and second of all, that is how you sing that national anthem. She was awesome. I'm, I'm still, I still got to watch the um, they had a performance after, uh, to celebrate. So I've seen little clips uh, of, uh, you know, uh, the fireworks the poem. and all those things. No, no, I'm talking about like after, after, oh, the, the, the poem is like, well, come on, this is like, let's just we'll rewatch the whole thing after this, I'll tell you. Keeps like gets our spirits up. We should, we should do, we should do, honestly. Well, all right, let's talk about the, uh, some of the stuff that happened last week. Obviously, I know Hannah is vastly disappointed um, with her team being out, but I think we all expected that to happen. But what I wanted to ask you, I'll start off with you, Hannah, is that regarding the Rams, obviously decisions uh, to be made about, you know, Goff uh, as your, um, you know, QB. Um, the, your head coach, Sean McVay, was asked, you know, what's going to happen. He said no decisions been made yet, which isn't a good look uh, for, for, uh, for, for Goff. Um, what do you think is going to happen from there? So where, where do the Rams go from here with, with him? And, you know, what's the plans for the future, you reckon? That is a big question. Um, yeah. I think I think the exact phrase that Sean McVeigh used, you know, saying he's the quarterback right now, is mm. very telling. Um, what I will say is that the round uh, golf isn't the reason the Rams lost to the Packers. He had a decent game, I thought. I don't think his offensive line did many favors. The defense weren't what the defense has been. But if you look at his stats, I'm just grabbing some notes. Here, he, you know, he completed 21 of 27 passes, 174 yards, threw a touchdown, um, but he was sacked four times, which doesn't help. So he wasn't the reason they lost. And I don't think he necessarily always is the reason they lose. But at the same time, he's not the reason they win. And you look at the Packers and you look at the Bucks and you look at the Chiefs and you look at the Bills and their quarterback is a huge part of the reason why they win. Um, so it's challenging. And I, I've, I've, kind of defended Goff and stuck up with him a lot 
up until about midway through this season when I started to lose patience. And what I found really frustrating <laughs> watching the game on Sunday was he's so much better when they play no huddle and, and no snap and just go, just go, go, go. It's almost like when he has time to look at that defensive line, and we know Sean McVay is talking in his ear right down as, as long as he can. Yeah. It's almost like he overthinks it. He sees the coverage and he panics. Whereas when he just goes and plays his sort of instinctive game, he's much better, I think. So I think that's that there. I think him and Sean McVeigh obviously have got to do a lot of work on their relationship because it's clear that McVeigh has lost a bit of patience. But it's going to be so difficult if they do want to replace him. Now, don't get me wrong. If the Rams want to get rid of him or bring in a new QB1, then they will. They will find a way. They've got no first round draft picks. And they've got the 57th pick in the draft. Potentially got three picks in the third round due to sort of trades and whatnot. So could trade it up you've also got a massive cap hit for Jared Goff he's on a huge contract Dude. so there are difficulties there but it's like anything it's like the Deshaun Watson situation he's got no trade clause in his contract but if he wants out they will they will find a way so I think it's I think it's interesting it's I loved watching John Wolford this season on the game and 10 minutes that he played um but is he a full starting QB no but he brings something different to that offense that you probably want to see um, and, you know, it looks more like a sort of modern offense with that much more mobile dual threat quarterback rather than just a pocket passer because pocket passers are sort of a dying breed, aren't they? Um, so I don't know what the solution is. I think it's a headache. Um, and I think it's going to be a really telling off season. I think he's got, Goff has either got a lot of work to do or he is out. And I think, I think there's just so many factors. And I think, yeah, with the, with the lack of, Although it is a very QB heavy draft, the lack of sort of first round draft picks and the sheer cost of Goff's contract, I think, mm. will make it difficult, but there's always a way. So it just, it just, it just depends. I think um, when you look at how the rest of that team was playing, you need an elite QB and the Rams will be black in the Super Bowl. Don't forget as well, he did get them into a Super Bowl two seasons ago. And we yep. do have very short term memories in the NFL. Um, so I was just about to say that to you as well. <laughs> so, so just before we go to Sam, are you, were you, are you stick or twist on, on golf? I think I'm probably twist at this point. Um, but I do, I would like to stick in a way and see what he can do. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot will depend on what this off season looks like, because if we have, you know, OTAs again, if you've, whether they come back, if you've got proper training camp, if we have preseason games, which is crazy to be talking about in January, I think it's quite different. But I think Sean McVeigh has lost his patience, and the, the rest of that Rams team are all peaking. Like now is the kind of right time. That offense is coming into its own. That defense is looking fantastic when Aaron Donald isn't missing half the snaps. Um, so it's like it's it's win now, right? You're in that you're on that kind of crest of the wave. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm jury's still out. It depends who they could get in. If it's like, oh, we could get Sean Watson, then get to Sean Watson. Put the but trigger. If, it, if it's we're gonna have to gamble on like a, a fifth round draft pick mm -hmm. or John Wolford, I don't know. I don't know. Sam, what say you, sir? I think they should stick with him. Um, and reason there's a couple of points actually what you've just mentioned there. Sean McVeigh talking in your ear all the way up to the very last second would drive anyone nuts. And you've got to put 100% trust into that QB. No, no matter what QB you put in there, if he gets a new rookie and you've got someone, again, you've got pressure as it is, then having someone talk, talking in your ear all the way through, when you as a player are in the full mix of it, you've got everything in front of you. I know the view is completely different, but you as the QB have got to make that ultimate decision. Mm. I don't think anyone is going to take want to take that spot unless that communication it stops early on like you said he's a lot better when it's on the, when it is on the hurry up almost right so if he can if he could actually do that um we'll see the right goff here's my other thing you've had so many injuries in different areas that even when the defense has got beaten up the offense can't get a breather you've seen uh cam Akers come in rookie actually started to come into form once he got his snaps up like you said have a preseason in there I think you stick with him and actually start to use the pieces that you've got. You've probably got more uh, ammo to make moves in other areas of the team to give Goff rather than chuck it all away to replace your QB who then doesn't actually have that many weapons. Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. Then you've got Reynolds potentially, as you say, 
um, coming in there as a wide receiver three, potentially, right? Then you've got a tight end, half decent. I just think that right now it's actually just add some more weapons, maybe on that O-line to give them a bit more time and then go from there. Because what you're going to do, you're going to put a, a new QB in, O-line's not actually the strongest as it, as it should be, and they end up getting flattened. It doesn't matter who you are, getting sacked four times, to me, says the O-line is not strong enough. So stick stick with him and hopefully build around a great defence that you actually do have as, as well and, and, and become that and use uh, Cam Akers now. You've got, in my, wait, is it too early to say you've replaced Todd Gurley? Maybe. Hi. But uh, yeah, he's actually doing, doing the business. So stick with him and give him what he needs. I completely agree on the O-line. You look back at that team that got to the Super Bowl two years ago and the O-line was superior. Like he had bags of time and that's that's what he needs. And you look at the O-line, it was it was painful to watch on, on um, that was it Saturday? Yeah, Saturday at mm. times. because They just weren't there. They weren't blocking. Um, and yeah, I kind of agree. I, I, I do think that actually the O-line is the problem and you're without Andrew Whitworth for most of the season. And he wasn't full Andrew Whitworth when he came back in the playoffs, I would say. If you mentioned I, I, just there, sorry, I was just going to say, sorry, obviously, with the picks that you've the picks that you've got, you might find yourself actually getting more offensive linesmen towards the there because, like you said, it's going to be a few people looking to, I reckon, strengthen at QB and um, wide receiver this year because there's obviously a few coming through as well on on the drafts that you might get lucky. It might fall in place for the Rams. So yeah, that, that's how I would look at it at this point. I mean, just quickly before we move on, I I'm, I don't have a problem with with. Um, you have in like someone like McVeigh in your ear, which is an offensive mastermind, the same way that Carl Sh- uh, Shanahan is an offensive mastermind as well. And I think that with players like Goff, like, you know, uh, they're still learning their trade and he's still a young player. He's not been in the league that long. Uh, and his skill set might suit, you know, uh, uh, yeah, well, the thing is, obviously, he was there already when, when McVeigh took, to- took over. So it's not his his quarterback that he he's chosen himself. So I think that he's devised schemes that actually utilize Goff's, you know, dink and dunks. You know, he's not a long arm, big throw, thrower, you know? He, I, I, he kind of you know. was though. He kind of was a confused guy. One thing I would say actually with the McVeigh and his ear thing, it's just occurred to me. When mm. you do live TV, you have voices in your head constantly. And when it is busy, if you've got a producer or director who's talking all the time it doesn't matter how much you've done your job it it's like sensory overload so yeah i wonder if it's a bit on the bay to just take his take like, just step back a little bit and let him play naturally i could talk about this all day so we should probably move on <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to the ravens um obviously there's a really disappointing performance from them uh, when it came to last Sunday, you know, it just seemed quite predictable, but I'm not going to lead you on this this thing here. But um, I'll start off with you, Sam. Do you feel that the Ravens, you know, Lamar Jackson have to look for a different way of uh, style of playing? Or do you think it's OK for what they're doing at the moment? I think they're always going to be run heavy at this point. And why would you change what you've got, your what, where your strengths are? Mm-hmm. They've had you got to look at they've had to bring in Des Bryant out of retirement to put in as a wide receiver. Are you going to start chucking the ball that often? I can see Hannah smirking, so I'm not sure if she's actually agreeing with that or not. But here's my thing why would you who are you going to throw that ball to? You've got Marquise Brown, you got Des Bryant, they're your real and Willie Sneed. Really, mm-hmm. for me, I can see why he wants to do it. And following on from what we just spoke about there, where we've got QBs that actually go and win you the game. Mm. Lamar Jackson is that guy. Like, why are you going to uh, move on from that? However, you do have to have a plan B. You have to. And I think that's at some point they're going to have to look at that and actually start looking, one, at the weapons. I, again, I think the O-line on this occasion is actually half decent enough to mm. give him that time to actually get the move, move on. We've got um, Dibbins, obviously, obviously Dobbins, sorry, um, there is, again, decent young running back coming in, run the ball keep running the ball but at some point when you need to and you're coming up against a good run defense they've got to find that plan b and it's, it's just not there so do they change what they're doing no but you got you got to add to that offense as i say mm. you can't keep bring you can't bring a man out of retirement the guy was sitting by poolside and he was happy and he's like you can't believe he's getting a call for a team like the ravens they could do better for me personally, I think there was a lot more sort of talent they could have gone and approached and actually had a bit more longevity. But who's to say that 
who am I? I'm not the expert. So maybe let's see if they've got something in the draft that they were trying to plan. And this was just a stopgap. Hannah, what do you think? I mean, I agree with you. When you've got a quarterback that can rush over a thousand yards a season, two seasons in a row, you're going to, you're going to lean on the run game. What you can't have is a team that is first in terms of rushing and that running attack and ranked dead last in passing yards. Like that just is too too unbalanced it's like having an all-out offense and absolutely no defense like no defense like it's too it's too one-sided and Marquis Brown Hollywood Brown he said it like we need to be more balanced yes their run game is strong if you shut that down if you and we saw it on uh, Saturday night if you blitz the way that the the Bills did they were blitzing 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 and shutting down those those run options and Lamar Jackson had nowhere to pass it to either um, so you, you, there are there are holes there. It's too, if you've got a if you've got a good run defense, it's too easy to, to shut them down and hold them to three points in a divisional round game. So yeah, they've got to find a way to be more balanced. They do need um, a couple of good wide receivers. You, you'd imagine that's what they'll be looking for in the draft. Mm. Um, find some good young wide receiving talent because it's just too one sided, and they're not going to get you know last year out on the wild card this year out on the division around they're not going to make that ch- afc championship game they're not going to make a super bowl just running the football it, it, it just seems to, to me I, i've got a different take on it i also look at yes definitely the the, the schemes were just run 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 and it's quite predictable uh, but this has been spoken about during the season but also i do think that Lamar Jackson, if he wants to say that he's he can also be a pocket passer, he's not actually proven that in any form of way. His, his, his passes were wayward. So therefore, I think that's something he has to work on skill set wise as well. I think that's partly down to the receivers. He did throw for almost 3,000 yards and 326 touchdowns this season, mm. which isn't huge when you look at like other quarterbacks. But still, he's putting up decent yard in terms of numbers. But if you've got no one there to catch it, no reliable wide receivers to be catching that ball or to make the yards after the catch, which we see mm. is so valuable when you're trying to move down the field, that's where you're going to struggle. I think in the wildcard game, particularly early on, you could tell Lamar Jackson wasn't comfortable throwing it. He didn't look like he wanted to. You could tell he didn't look what, like what he could see downfield. In the second half, I feel like he kind of relaxed into it and they maybe gave him like, just throw the ball, it'll be okay. Yeah. And he didn't do better. Um, so I think it, it's a confidence thing, and that comes with having receivers that you know are going to catch the ball. Look with Tom Brady; he's like Antonio Brown's there, Mike Evans there. Oh, he's Scott got stacked deck. There. Yeah, you know, you, you need that. You need that stack there. But he's, but he's I, I, I would also sorry sorry Sam. Oh, I'll just say this: Willie yeah. Sneed is 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 isn't bad. He's not he's not a terrible receiver. You know, then there I've seen a couple of them to open a few times. And it's, it's, I think it's Lamar Jackson's natural in- inclination to run. And I think that it's, you know, the schemes have been set that way. So he just does that all the time. And I, I do think that he's part of the problem as well. The amazing player, really entertaining to watch, great for fantasy football. But at the end of the day is that if you're looking to win something, I don't really see it happening with the way that he's, he's playing. With Willie Sneed, he might be okay, but would you be excited to have him in your fantasy team? Think about it like that. Hey, I'll take him to the Giants wait, right now. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Willie Sneed, 432 yards. Mm. Mark Andrews is over 700 yards. He's their mm-hmm. tight end. He's the only one he seems to have a connection with. Put some wide receivers in there. Because mm. he, said he said about his passing accuracy, his passing accuracy is actually, is actually not that bad, I don't think, actually, when, once he does chuck it. But his only person that seems to get free seems mm. to be Mark Andrews. The only reason he gets Hollywood Brown is, if, uh, say, if they've got away, he gets away from the blitz, and the secondary is not great. And it's obviously, and that's where he's going for the deep, deep threat with him each time. And that's where he racks his numbers up. Who has he got, really, as a sort of half-decent slot receiver, just to sort of maintain and go for the small yardage when he's chucking the rock i don't think he has it and like i said it's not exciting you could, they can go one-on-one with willie sneed as a defense because you know actually we're probably in a good fighting chance to stop him he's not a mm. game he's not a game changer when you look at even the great you just mentioned brady there yes he's stacked but he's not just stacked he's stacked with high talent high yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what i'm saying he doesn't have that mark andrews is a top is an elite tight end in the league and it's what and it's evident that's who he trusts. Mm. He doesn't have anyone else. That's what I'm saying. They need to. They need to do that. I see your. I see your argument. I just don't think he has anyone that. 
a good wide receiver can make a really inaccurate throw mm. great. <laughs> and then we've seen that. We've seen the likes of Hopkins, Michael Thomas, who've, you know, just a literally lob up in the air, change mm. it into an actual game changer. And they do not have that right now. And as I said, Des Bryant is your go-to. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's a, that is definitely just a red zone option only. But yeah, yeah. I think that, <laughs> there, there has to be changes all round. 100% because it's, it's a bit too predictable. Again, mm. great on fantasy. Um, you know, if, if you if pick him for your fantasy team, you're going to be getting points all the way. But in the days that it doesn't win anything, really, it's too predictable. But let's um, move on to um, Sir Philip Rivers. He's retired from uh, the NFL after 17 seasons to coach high school football. Um, he's one of the, um, you know, you know decent, decent quarterbacks to, to never win a Super Bowl. Um, Hannah, I will start. I'll start off with you because I can see by your look that you, uh, your of your opinion on this. Um, what do you feel about um, Phillips Rivers' career? Do you feel that he's he's achieved, you know, great success or or been a disappointment? Well, you, like you say, he is one of those quarterbacks, and you'll go. He was one of those great ones who never even got to a Super Bowl, and you know, eight time Pro Bowler. He's up there in sort of the top five all time when it comes like to passing touchdowns, yards, completions. Um, I think what I find the most impressive is that in those 17 seasons, he has never missed a game. He made 252 straight starts. He played a t- through a torn ACL in the 2007 AFC title game where they lost to the Patriots. That is impressive. That is hardy. Um, for me, and I've had this conversation a lot, I feel like I missed the Philip Rivers glory days. So it's really hard for me to judge. I yeah. only really got into football and started watching football, you know, sort of 2012, 2013. And by then the charges were kind of on the slide and you know, he you know, makes some big throws and was a bit of a gunslinger, but I, I definitely miss like the peak of Philip Rivers. So it is hard for me to judge. I've got a huge amount of respect for what he's achieved. I will definitely miss his trash talk. Yeah. Um, and I think he'll be one of those that a few years down the line, there'll be the, the there is already a sort of Hall of Fame conversations and, and people sort of going, is he, isn't he, is he, isn't he? Um, and I think just for sort of his hardiness and length of um, length of career and, and staying healthy, that is that is impressive. Um, and he's obviously a good guy on and off the field. And yeah, you, you wish you could have done, done more and got a ring at least to show for it or even just a Super Bowl jersey, but them's the breaks. Sam, uh, I, I I really like it. And I say I, I do like him from yeah the trash talking, his personality, and uh, having that character in in the NFL. But to not get that far, and not you know, do you look at it then really overall for me a good NFL QB, and uh, and I say QB one a very a, a very good one. Is he the elite though? No. I can't, I can't have it. Where he is elite, nine children, fair play to you. <laughs> and then to come out and perform. I, I thought he'd keep going until he could field his own offense. It's, I, it's thought he, I thought he'd keep going until he had 11 it's, kids and he'd be like, right, they can take over. That's it. <laughs> I, I think, look, listen, you know, he will, Hall of Fame, yeah, judging by some of the other people that have made Hall of Fame, then yes, you know, I think that he, you could, you could give him that. But I, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not convinced of putting him in that that all time because you, you you've got to have one bit of success. I, when I base success, I base success on what you've won. You know, you can't, mm. and that goes with any sport. Were you successful? Well, what did you win? Cause you don't play this game to take part. Every time you put that Jersey on and you cross that white line, you're there to win. So at the end of the day, if you haven't won anything for me, you weren't that successful. If you were uh, a success story, cause you went, undrafted no one wanted you and you crept your way up and you you forged a uh sort of said well 17 year career then i'd say you you were success, a successful story did he have a successful career number one pick fourth overall you'd expect the caliber of someone like that to for me to win something and he didn't so no very good was it that successful no Tough crowd, tough crowd on 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 Philip Rogers, Rogers, Philip Rivers. What's that mean? 
My, 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 You're my, trying uh, to say Rogers because he's on your mind the whole he's time. He's on my mind all the time because you know where we're going next. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna use this slip up to move on to the main subject. What I want you to speak about before we go into the actual results of the game, which you think is going to happen. Let's <laughs> let's go with you know Brady versus Aaron Rodgers. Now, obviously, this has come up again. You know, obviously, they met earlier in the season. Fluke result from from the Bucks, but I'm biased. Um, do you? I'll start with you, Hannah. Who are you? A Brady or a who have you got? Brady or you got Rogers? Who are you? What like who, just who? Which is my just favorite? No coach. stats. Just uh, who you oh, would choose Rogers. for your I'm, for your franchise? Ro- Rogers, hundred percent. And I why? Just, he's he's so damn likable, and he has so much fun. You look, you look at him playing that division around game no one has any right having that much fun looking that relaxed when they're playing football in january he's just there like grinning when he's under center like lobbing it down like crowning alan lazard just having a ball he does not look bothered he loves what he's doing he's um he's just an absolute dude and a baller um uh, is that the question? I'm a bit confused. Yeah, I'm more of a Rogers fan than a Brady fan, personally. But that's not to say that I haven't got huge respect for Tom Brady and what he's achieved. As frustrating as it has been at times for sort of other teams with what he did at the Patriots and just how just they were just always there. It's it's phenomenal. I reckon he'll be playing till he's 50. And, you know, the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, which I know I've mentioned, when the Rams lost to, to the Patriots, I was lucky enough to be there. And I was like, yeah, I've just watched my team lose the lowest scoring Super Bowl in history. But I saw Brady with a sixth ring and I saw him do that. And that was really impressive. And watching him in the flesh doing what he does was remarkable. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely more of a, a, a Rogers fan if I have to pick between the goats. So yes, the most sensible thing you to. said in all the time <laughs> that we've I've known you, best thing you said, best take. Now let's see, Sam. I know who's going to is going to go the opposite way because no. he's going to do that because I'm such a Rogers fan. No, go for I, it. I, yeah, I would love to. I'd love to do that. As you know, any opportunity I could normally find, I, I would. But <laughs> um, this I, I, let me say this: I am grateful to be able to see this level of talent in my lifetime. Like it's it's, it's unreal. Um, but yeah, I think like uh, like Hannah just mentioned there. <laughs> Rogers is so much more likable. I don't know what it is. It, it's so cool. tough. He's just Brady's cool. not a horrible guy. Like you can't, you can't say that. But Rogers plays with a tash. I'll give him that. Yeah. So <laughs> that's how we're 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 on that one. But I think this week is going to be phenomenal to see the pair of them obviously go go at it because again, it's we just spoke about Lamar Jackson being in the in the pocket, not that, and obviously mo, uh, sort of the new breed mobile. These two aren't. And you know what? It was actually funny watching the Packers when Rogers does obviously run in for a touchdown. That it's like this, it's not just the joy, it's the surprise that he actually went through the read yeah. option, runs for a touchdown. And I think that this this week will be um, I mean it's still a, quite quick though. It's 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 not it's not um I mean I don't want to make it sound like a quick. I don't want I don't want to make it sound like a, a like a Rogers loving because uh, <laughs> there's probably someone who's watching this or, or listening and being like, oh my god, here he goes again. I'll be fair. Like now, so if you're looking at uh, Tom Brady, obviously, you know, it's kind of evident now, obviously, because of the demise of the Patriots, you know, who the most important link was. I used to think it was Belichick, but maybe not now because, because obviously, look where Brady's got that team. And even when they were shaky, you know, he managed to steady the ship, coach his wide receivers, demand more from them, demand excellence. And, you know, obviously, the man's got, you know, as many rings as Thanos. If not more, I see you've got one more. So it's just so my my take is like I always have this 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 you know battle in my brain of of because I love Rogers Aaron Rodgers playing style, the gun ho style and the heroics that he's actually done. But if we're talking about a system player that you're actually gonna put in your franchise now, who's guaranteed you you know, more so guarantee you to to at least be in the Super Bowl, you maybe go to Brady. You know, do you guys agree or well Bruce Arians agrees? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, don't I mean, get started and, on him. <laughs> and, um, like, to be fair, Brady's done exactly what he went to Tampa Bay to do thus far. You know, they're yeah. one game away from the Super Bowl. That is what he went there to do. And he obviously liked what he saw from the rest of the sort of setup there, the team there. I thought it was really telling comments, actually, from Bruce Arians 
after that game last weekend against the Saints where he said, you know, I let Brady coach. Sometimes I just sit back and watch. And that's mm-hmm. not something that Brady was able to do mm-hmm. in in um, New England. So when you've got a quarterback with that level of experience and you look at that Tampa Bay team, there's so much talent. Generally, they're pretty young, though. They've not, they've not got that that winning mentality. They've not been in the playoffs since 2002. So these guys don't know how to get through that. When you've got someone like Brady, he's going to, he's going to guide that ship, pun intended. Um, <laughs> and he's going to get them there and he's going to give them the benefit of his experience. So that's not to say that Aaron Rodgers isn't going to do that. Cause you, again, you look at that Green Bay team and they've got a lot of young guys and lo and behold, they're in the NFC championship game. And that's got, got to be coming partly from from that quarterback so in a way you kind of almost can't pick one or the other because they've clearly both got that skill set of, of leadership and and raising the standards and bringing these guys along with them and giving the confidence to the younger players on their team that we've got this we're going to do this that's true that's true i mean last time that they met um obviously it was in the the, the tampa bay heat uh it's going to be a complete different situation now uh with, with brady having to go into whatever minus degree whether they're, they're going to have in in green bay so uh, you know it's 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 a level up, but if if Brady wins this this one, which which I'm obviously I'm going to root, root for the Packers, but um, you know if Brady wins this one, then then I, I you know you got I got to give him a lot more respect than, than I do, even though I do reluctantly, but I'm going to have to just big him up. He may have to go on here, which I never said would happen ever. Um, so let's actually go on to the, um, you know, the actual championship games, NFL ch- conference championship games. So obviously it starts off, you know, luckily enough, good, good segue uh, to, uh, you know, to Lambo with the Packers and, and the Buccaneers. Now, uh, you know, now that we've finished the, with the loving with Aaron Rodgers, do you actually feel that the Packers is that going to win? I'll start off with you, Sam. Who have you got on that game? This is the worst one for me this week. Um I'm going to go with the Bucks. Sorry, Andre. I'm going to go with the Bucks. I just, I think Tom Brady just carries this team through. I, I know H- Hannah probably wants to the the Packers to win, so she can she can say that her team lost to the champions. However, um, <laughs> yeah. I, no, I, I just think that yeah, Brady's experience in in the um, no matter what the weather is, I don't think he cares, and I don't think his team will be. This is going to be their best chance. I think to go on and actually uh, a lot of these members anyway, I don't know how long Brady's got. And I've, I really do believe that this will be the year that um, Bucks will go on. I also think that Bruce Arians is going to have that little bit of hunger to obviously get them through. And I think his play calling will, will get them through this game. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm all in with the Bucks this week. Interesting. Hannah, who have you got? Are you with me? Oh, do you know, I, I kind of, <laughs> I almost can't call this. So I do agree with you, Sam. There is, a, there is an element of it that it will be so Brady and the Bucks, it's like, that's what they, they brought him in to do. It's what they brought in Gronk to do. It's what they brought in Brown to do. Um, and things just go their way. And you saw that grit and they looked great. Their defense looked so good on Sunday. Um, but I think they had the advantage there of the fact that they knew Drew Brees can't throw, couldn't throw the ball long, but they, it was just a short pass in the run game. And they shut that down. Whereas Aaron Rodgers, you know, he can throw the ball long. And we saw what they can do with three running backs against the Rams as well, which you don't usually see from Green Bay. So I think it's a really a, almost impossible one to call because I was also watching the Green Bay game and thinking, this looks like a championship team. They look phenomenal uh, in all phases. The defense play great. The, the offense is so unpredictable, which I think is the real challenge. Um, but then you compare that with that strong Bucks defense, the fact that Brady has got all those weapons. Honestly, I, I almost feel like I have to sit on the fence for this. I know it's a heart and head situation. You can't here. Sit, sit on the fence. My heart says Packers. My head just, I'm going to have to double down on what I did in my Super Bowl bracket for the Super Bowl challenge on, on overtime because a couple of weeks ago, Monday after, I think it was week 17, I sat down and I had the Bucks going all the way on, in the NFC. And I guess. Because I almost can't pick, I just have to back the me of three weeks ago and go, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we all know where I'm going with. I'm going with the Packers. <laughs> and, and you know I'm with them. They're my second team. I love Aaron Rodgers. I love their fans. I love everything about that, that, that franchise. And if I wasn't a Giants fan, 
then that would definitely be my whole heart would be a Packers Packers. You have half of it or quarter. But uh, you know, come on, with the weather, Aaron Rodgers has 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 a point to prove. Um, you know, I I said this at the start of the season that when they when they uh you know drafted Jordan Love, then it was just gonna ignite something in him and he's gonna be able to he's got a point to prove to prove. See, I have a new theory on that. Sorry, I keep getting emails. Like the sound is annoying. I have a new theory on that, actually. And I'm not sure he was ever that bothered because if you look at what Alan Lazard has been saying this week, we're all going, they needed a wide receiver in the draft. Actually, what they did by drafting Jordan Love was fill Alan Lazard and their wide receiver group with nothing but confidence because it was like, well, the GM and the organisation thinks they've got the talent here. So it's just filled those young guys with this belief. So, and all right. Because they've been playing, they've been balling, all of them. Like that. Uh, you know, uh, so I, I, you know, I, I definitely am going to go with the Packers, but obviously I'm biased completely. So for those who've been watching the show for several years, you know I'm always going to ride with Aaron Rodgers no matter what. But let's go on to the uh, the next game. Uh, this one here, I've, I've I've called this a little while ago. I, I'm, I, you know, I, I definitely think that the Bills are going to surprise people, especially if if Patrick Mahomes can't come back. But you know, I'm not going to lead you, Hannah. Who have you got? Bills or Chiefs? Wow. It all comes down to quarterbacks in this one for me. And I think I think we'll see Patrick Mahomes in that field. I do. I think he's going through the concussion protocols. And yes, it has to be approved by an independent doctor. It's not like the Chiefs alone can decide mm-hmm. his ability and his, his fitness to play. Um but I think we'll see him. Because as well, if you look at if you look at that hit that took him out of the game. And I'm obviously you don't want to speculate when it's concussion because you never really know the details. But it did look a little bit more like he was winded, I think, when you watch it back, rather than like a bang to the head. Um, so I don't know. Um, I can't. I shouldn't really speculate on concussion. <laughs> um, but look, I mean, even thing is, th- this is the thing. Even if Mahomes isn't able to play, Andy Reid, as we saw on Sunday, is going to use the game plan as though Mahomes is on the field. He has that much belief in his team, in his system, and in Chad Henney, um, who, bar that sort of errant throw, made a couple of great plays, and they they played this, they, they called the same play that they'd have played if Mahomes was on the field, which tells you everything, I think. I would love to see the Bills do this. I really would. Um, I love I love this how this Bills team are, are playing, and they're sort of... I, I find myself rooting for them week in, week out. I just... I'm not sure their defense has quite got what it takes to shut down a Mahomes-led Chiefs, and they then need to keep up with outscoring a potentially Mahomes-led Chiefs, and that is a challenge as well. So, I I, I did say before I think the Bills are the only team that could potentially stop the Chiefs, and if Mahomes doesn't play or can't play the full game, then I think the Bills will will not make the most of that in a way that the Browns just didn't. Um, mm. I think they'll make ballsier play calls as well to make sure they really capitalise on any opportunity. So I, I think it'll be a close one either way, but I just can't quite see past the Chiefs and I kind of hope I'm wrong. Sam? Yeah, I don't see past the Chiefs. Um, and I really, yeah, Black Hanna has been great watching the Bills. Um, obviously, uh, one, how well they've been playing. Two, obviously the connections with the show and, and obviously Kev um, being a Bills fan was obviously great. But the Chiefs, I mean, okay, uh, Mahomes will be back. Like, look, reading the reports and stuff, it sounds like he's made some big strides in there, and I think he will be back. Even if he hasn't, they've had a they've had a week really of practice now of on actually given the circumstances practice as if he wasn't there. So now I think they'll probably be more me or more geared up for it. On the other side of this. I don't see, I literally, other than the, the Bucks at this point going forward in time, I think they're the only defence that can stop the Chiefs at, at this point, in my opinion. And I think right now it's, it's theirs to lose. And, oh man, I just, what even watching them last week, I just looking again, who is going to stop these guys? It, was, it, it really it really is just right, right now, who's going to put something up in front of this um, sort of Chiefs offence? And, hmm. The defense is still good enough as well to, to win you a game. Like it just yeah, but let's yeah. say if Chad Henney has to play, because I don't think he's a hundred percent sure that he's gonna that Mahomes gonna play because he 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 that looked nasty. To it me. was his neck though. I think it's his neck when you, when it, where he pulled him down. It's his yeah, well, neck. Well, we don't know because yeah, he. Uh, look, we, and, and 
Well, Andy Reid said afterwards that he was a bit, he was winded. So he did mm. say it was, and you think if you, if you are properly winded, that's going to make you not to speculate because we don't know what's happened with the head. In that's the what I mean, because he hit the back but, of his head as well. But, but also as well, like if, if you are winded, that can have a, a sort of similar like woozying effect. And, mm. you know, so they have to take him out of the game. Of course, he can't be like, he goes, oh no, my head's fine. I was winded. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It looks the same. You know, spade, call a spade a spade. You've got to go through the protocol. But if it was a winding, slightly more than a head bash, or they did it like his eyes were closed, it, either way, I think even if he does play, I wouldn't be surprised if they have to kind of go carefully with him. And then you know that Bill's defence is going to be really going for the sacks because if he was in concussion, concussion protocol this week, one more bad hit, and that's going to be him straight out of the game. So there's, there's, there's a chance, if, even if he does play, be surprised if he's on the field for every single snap, right? Well, I mean that that considers Sam as well. Like, you know, are you still gonna go for him even if it uh, go for the Chiefs even if it's 100%. Henny, 100%. even with Henny? Mate, I'm not saying I could go and do that. I'm saying, look at me. If I was stood in front and I knew looking in front of me what I can throw the ball to, right? <laughs> then then <Yeah>. great. <laughs> you know, thank you very much. You know, I'll, I'll play the short game with Kelsey all day long. See if you can stop him. Do you know? <laughs> that's, that's... It, it, I know it's going to be interesting to see. What happens because I know that the Bills will rock you like at least a couple of times. Because obviously, if you see if you mm -hmm. when they smell blood, you know, they're definitely gonna be going going for, for him to be able to get him out of the game, not obviously to injure his career purposely, but just to get him out of the game or to at least make him game, take him off your, of his game. If that's your game plan, <laughs> you're gonna be sadly mistaken making that your game plan because he has all those weapons that if he knows that's what they're going for, right. they'll play to and Andy Reid is Let's take out everyone that's on the field. What they have on the sideline with Andy Reid calling, it, mm. he's very adaptable very quickly. Let's not forget that. That he'll see that coming and he'll plan for that. He would have planned for that eventuality now, like that if they're going to go for him, that I think they'll get the job done. I just think they have, as I said, I think they have too much. They could lose two players in that offense and I still don't think they'd have any, any issues at this point. And you know what? Congrats and hats off to the Bills right now and they've got a really sort of bright future. But this isn't the one. This isn't the time to be playing the uh, the Raiders. Sorry, the Raiders. The Chiefs right now. So, <laughs> Chiefs all in for me. Bills Mafia, I'm I'm with you. If I I stand alone with you. I've stood with you for a long time now. I you know I do really think it's it's, it's the season that they're going to get to the the Super Bowl. I I've I've said from a little while ago that I I do feel that they're the ones that can actually knock the Chiefs off off of their um, perch. Um, and plus as well, because I've I've put a bet on ages ago that it's going to be the Bills and Packers in the in the Super Bowl. So there's some some selfish reasoning within my uh, my my theory. But um, you know, I I I try to I try to give them many different scenarios, and these guys will stick with with their choices no matter what. So we'll have to we'll have to see. But um, you know, it's, it's getting sad now because we only got a few. We've got three games to go, and then that's the end of the season, guys. We have to yeah. um. Start planning the Super Bowl week after next. Like we're gonna have to start doing that. So what we're, we're what we're looking at doing pretty much over the next few weeks, obviously on Verge and and Alt Sport, is um, you know giving you guys lots of Super Bowl previews after this. You know these conference games, these uh, championship games have, have finished. Um, you know I might try to get these guys to be able to put together a Super Bowl menu of choice uh, for you guys to be able to try it out at home. Uh, as well so we, we, we'll see what what we can uh, come up with i'm not sure about sam's cooking at all because i've tried it many a time and gone home ill hey listen i actually have a great <laughs> i actually have a great suggestion for your super bowl menu of choice but i'm not sure how much promotion i'm allowed to do on this show what am I, how much am i allowed jay well not 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 unless those people are paying so uh, <laughs> <laughs> so but we, we, we'll definitely get back to that one for sure um yeah we'll have a look and we might we may even have a, a special guest who's going to Give you guys some suggestions and teach you guys a few things. Um, and and Sam, you're not allowed to barbecue. That doesn't count. Even Ooh, you know, why not? barbecuing does not count at all. Can we have some veggie options, please, for those of us who are trying to save the planet by not eating animals? I have That's a vegan right. you, person in my house, so yeah, I'm sure we'll find some. You can barbecue. You can barbecue anything. I'll so, barbecue yeah. a carrot. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> You know what? Veggies are great on the barbie. Are, All right, well, we're gonna. We're, well, Hannah's gonna come out with a vegetarian menu uh, for for us. Um, you know, uh, cho choices for you, veggies, super uh, over your Super Bowl, and then we will um, see who who comes up trumps. Mine's gonna be me. I'm just gonna let you know. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first time she's heard of this, and I've put her on the spot, and that's the way you get people to agree to things. You put them on the spot <laughs> when you're recording. Oh, God. Tip, yeah. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for this week. Obviously, it's a shorter show because there's less news out there. Deshaun Watson hasn't moved as yet, and I don't think he will. Um, you know, Adam Gase has landed a uh, offensive uh, coordinator job in uh, Seahawks, and I don't understand how that happened. Uh, if I ask you guys that, I'd be still be perplexed how <laughs> after the seasons, what I've seen with the Dolphins and the Jets, how that man still has a job. Baffles me. You know, I, maybe I should apply for it in the next time too. I can think of a couple of theories. Let's not get into them. Ooh, <laughs> all right. Some people just fail up, Dre. Some people fail up. Yeah, well, I, I'm just baffled how, how that keeps on happening with him in particular because he is terrible. I'm sure he's a nice Apple person, friends. but he's absolutely <laughs> terrible. And, I, and I've seen him long enough to be able to say, you shouldn't be doing this as a job. But anyway, I'm going to move on from that. We'll catch <laughs> you guys next week. Um, you know, obviously, we'll be able to be start looking at the Super Bowl and start our previews towards that. Um, we'll, we'll see if there's any more news and tidbits we can actually speak about. And then um, we will, oh, oh, yeah, it's, it's just so sad. It's near the end of the season, honestly. We're just going to have to have the shows of just like talking about life. And You can do that. You know, Apart from none of us have any lives or do anything or go anywhere. Start with these yeah. thrilling content. Hockey. <laughs> hockey. Hockey's next. We're going to have the hockey podcast. That's what we'll do. I'm all over that. <laughs> I used to play hockey. That's about as far as I can go on hockey. Well, you know, anything's, anything's acceptable when we've got no content, uh, NFL content to go for. <laughs> we'll have to do that. All right, guys. We will catch you guys next week. Thank you for watching and listening. Peace. Peace. Bye.